Welcome back to the Much More Than Medicare YouTube channel, broadcast, simulcast on the podcast as well here today. So, it is now after the 4th of July. Hopefully everyone had a safe holiday. It's going to come up to August 15th rapidly. August 15th is now only five weeks away. It will end the special enrollment period which I have called Biden Care throughout the channel and podcasts. Okay. It has been a very busy season. Normally during the summer, I hope for a less busy season. And especially because I'm revising Maximize Your Medicare. Okay. That said, it's been a good season because of the fact that so many people have reached out to us and have taken advantage. They've pushed down their health insurance premiums. And for some people, that has been $1,000 a month plus for a household. And sometimes that household is a single person. That's true. It's entirely true. It was available. It still is available. However, time is running out. Somebody says, okay, if you're on procrast you're one of those procrastinators and you know you like to you know dare fate and time and you like to hit send right at the last moment, please do not do that. The reason for that is that there are details, number one, there are important details in order for you to get the best premium and select the best plan. Sometimes you need to do a, a little extra homework in order to come up with that determination. In addition to that, there are certain other facts that I've made a lot of information or videos, interviews about this, which is that getting the lowest premium means that you need to understand how you are getting your taxable income managed. In other words, your estimate it, that matters a great deal here. And the real reason here today is that we've got this five-week window for those persons who have received unemployment benefits. Because deep in the weeds, in the very small print inside of the Amer American Rescue Plan, what I've called Biden Care, is the idea that health insurance premiums can be zero if you have received unemployment benefits throughout 2021. So if you have received unemployment benefits at any time throughout 2021, your health insurance premium can be zero. Now, there are all sorts of stipulations, right? You need to use your healthcare.gov or you need to use your state-specific site. You need to do that to update your plan even if you have health insurance. It's not going to automatically give in to you. You have to take steps. Anyway, these are options, powerful ones, in the favor of the buyer. Be sure you can click on the link and get our guidance, at least our first look for no fee, to tell you, yes, in fact, it makes sense to do extra work for you, your household, someone you know. This is not going to matter what age division. You could be 27 year old who, and you've been ejected from your parents' plan. You could be 63 years old waiting for Medicare. The subsidies, the advanced premium tax credits, that's another, that's the technical term for the subsidies, can make it worth it. August 15th, that date, I cannot move, meaning that on August 16th, I won't be able to help. However, between now and August 15, we'd absolutely be happy to. Please take advantage. Pocket costs. Are there exceptions? The answer is yes. There can be the Part B excess charge. Plan N has a copay for office visits and emergency room visits. Right? I've addressed that when comparing Plan G to Plan N. Again, more videos. Be sure to like and subscribe, by the way. Anyway, let's get back to here. Medigap, that is true and it's in stone. 
Okay, once you meet the Part B deductible in a calendar year, your costs are basically eliminated when you receive health care services. There's no getting away from that structure. Medigap carriers, they don't have any discretion here. If you are, if your service has been approved by Medicare, Medigap covers the balance. There's the exception of plans K and L, right? K and L are different because they pay 75, 50 and 75%. But, but for the rest of the Medigap plans, what this th article is saying is absolutely true. Because why? On Medicare Advantage, this is annual contract. So again, the beginner's corner is that under Medicare Advantage, the carrier determines everything, period. They get to determine what your costs for out-of-pocket costs will be, what your deductible will be, what your coinsurance will be. They get to determine whether or not you have prior authorizations. They get to determine whether or not they're going to cover you in a skilled nursing facility, even if you're not improving. They get to run the show. This fundamental difference between these two things must be fully understood prior to choosing. It's not a trap. Somebody says, okay, well, this wasn't explained to me. No, it's explained to you here on this channel. I've written a 200-page book about it. I speak about, you know, six trillion times, you know, over the years in order to try to make this very, very clear. In exchange, in exchange here, under Medicare Advantage, it is very likely your premium is zero. Zero. Very likely. In most locations in the country, you'll find a plan that costs zero. We will have that when we review the next article, which is over here. Um, let's see if it pulls up quickly. Yes, which is giving a survey about Medicare Advantage in 2021. And, the, and we will get to that in just a few moments. We probably should have done it in reverse order, right? <laughs> anyway, too late now. Uh, you know, I don't, have, I don't have a script and don't have lots of time to hit re-record. Okay. So you can see this infographic here. A smaller share of beneficiaries in traditional Medicare than in Medicare, mainly due to supplemental coverage. Okay. This is going to be true. Why? Because as I've explained to you, under Medigap, once you've met the $203 deductible in 2021, then your out-of-pocket costs are basically zero if you require health care services. Over here on Medicare Advantage, and you cannot break this, is that once you start requiring health care services, the Medicare Advantage carrier gets to tell you how much it costs, something they're going to reveal to you in advance every year and it's going to change every year. Another point of why you need to reselect your Part D and Medicare Advantage plan every year. But the issue here on this article is cost-related problems are less common among beneficiaries in traditional Medicare than in Medicare Advantage, mainly due to supplemental coverage. So while that is true, this is Monday mon morning quarterbacking. It is. Now, if it sounds like I just called Monday morning quarterbacking, you know, a negative, there's a reason. It's meant to be negative, right? Financial topics, it's very convenient, and our society has this, which is looking backwards, yeah, my hindsight's 2020. It's better than 2020, right? Yeah. Of course, if I have a crystal ball and I know that, uh, you know, I'm going to slip and fall off the curb and then I'm going to have to be hospitalized and replace my knee joint. Okay, if I have that crystal ball to that, then it's very, very clear. Then I can figure out what my optimal price would be, cost would be, and then I would choose accordingly. In advance, however, that is different, right? For example... Many persons on Medicare Advantage, not all, but many, are intentionally choosing because why? 
the money saved on premium on a monthly basis makes it worth it for that person. My issue here, and before I get too much further on this article, is this article doesn't bring this point up at all. Not at all. And this is the kind of omission that, you know, I don't love. Because it, to me, is an incomplete examination of costs and benefits and, vitally, your specific priorities, choices. Yes, of course, money is no object. Money is no object, fine. You can just buy Medigap. The premiums are going to keep going. It's going to cost you well over $1,200 a year per year in premium compared to a $0 Medicare Advantage plan. Okay. For some of you, that $1,200 is absolutely every bit worth it. Why? You've got a long list of pre-existing conditions. You've got a long history, a family history, which is difficult. You know that you've got knee replacements that has to happen in the near future, etc. You have a long list. You certainly may be choosing Medigap and paying the extra 100 plus a month and increasing over time, right, to change into Medigap. Over here, however, for some people, it's not worth, it's not worth the $1,200 a year. And then you've got a married couple, so it's two. So now you're at $2,400, and now you're three years down the road. Now it's $2,400 times three to four years. You're Mr. and Mrs. Perfect. You never go to the doctor. In a, and, oh yeah, by the way, I live month to month on Social Security. It can be entirely the rational choice to choose Medicare Advantage. Unfortunately, what happens here is KFF, even though the facts are right, the omission of the choices that people intentionally make, the risks this group intentionally made, makes it look like they've chosen wrongly, when in fact, they may have been entirely rational. That's what I'm here to do, to try to give you the sense of even-handedness that you can entirely choose either one of these two configurations and both can be absolutely rational and fitting for your situation and household. Before we move on to the next segment, I thought to go and swerve to the Medicare Masterclass. It's available only to subscribers at GH2 Unfiltered. Now, for first-time subscribers, I'm going to send you a copy of Maximize Your Medicare, the paperback edition. I'll send it to you for free and pay for postage anywhere in the lower 48. In Medicare ABC's, the Masterclass version, I'm going to be talking about all of the things that I can't really share with you here in public. 
there are a number of details which are too sensitive. They get mishandled, misunderstood, misapplied, and we know who will be to blame, me. In order to avoid this, however, there is a number, there are a number of hidden facts, hidden little tricks is not the right word, but really user consumer tips which can help optimize either the choice of plan, whether that be Medicare Advantage or your Part D plan or your Medigap carrier. So in other words, they're going to be inside information that I'm not really able to show here, which is out here for general consumption for people's general education. Again, gh2unfiltered.com for less than a cup of coffee a month, I'm going to give you a copy of Maximize Your Medicare for free, as well as exclusive access to videos, articles about the widest range of financial topics. In our fragmented society, blah, 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 in our fragmented society, there are very few things we can agree on. However, one thing I think we can all agree on, irrespective of your political belief, which is that surprise medical bills can create shock and concern, financial, deep financial concern for households after the fact. For this, we have bipartisan agreement. And finally, at the end of last week, President Biden announced the following bill, which is called the No Surprise Act. I want to say it's No Surprise Act. At any rate, it is a presidential order in order to protect consumers from surprise medical bills. Here up on your screen is the CMS announcement about it. So you can see it here, surprise billing happens when people unknowingly get care from providers that are outside of their health plans network and can happen for both emergency and non-emergency care. So this is your general situation, for example. You are, let's say for example, you have a surgery scheduled and instead what ends up happening, you go to the hospital that you know to be in network. However, the anesthesiologist is from out of network. In that situation, you are not covered under your individual health insurance plan. Let me just swerve to say under Medicare, this usually doesn't happen for PPOs. If you have Medicare Advantage PPO, it can happen under Medicare Advantage HMO, although it's not very likely. Under Medigap, you completely avoid this as long as all the health care providers accept federal Medicare. Back to individual health insurance. So in that particular situation, you can see what happens. You're the patient being prepped for surgery. You're not sitting there vetting to make sure that your anesthesiologist is, hey, is the anesthesiologist inside network to make sure that you get covered? That doesn't happen. That can result in a surprise medical bill. Obviously, other, other situations can occur. Most commonly known is, for example, an ambulance. The ambulance service not necessarily owned by the hospital, but a third party that's not in network with your plan, and all of a sudden you get the full bill. So let's see what this bill says, and we'll see it here. Among other provisions, today's interim final, final rule, ban surprise billing for emergency services, just like I said. So transportation from an, using an ambulance, a helicopter, for example needs to be, must be treated as in-network. You don't have to scramble around to figure out whether or not they were in and out of network. The last thing you have in mind as your friend, your family member calls the you know, ambulance service. Second, bans high out-of-network cost sharing for emergency and non-emergency services. Patient cost sharing, such as coinsurance and deductible, cannot be higher than if services were provided by an in-network doctor. And any coinsurance or deductible must be based on in-network provider rates. So, this leaves open some questions, right? Because what is high, what is defined as high out-of-network cost sharing is subject to some definition, right? So we don't you see the fine print. This is a rule. They are now accepting comments. We'll have to see.
We'll get to that in a moment. Third, bans out-of-network charges for ancillary care like anesthesiologist or assistant surgeon. Just like I said, at the first example, you cannot have an anesthesiologist, you cannot have assistant surgeon in the operating room and charging an out-of-network cost. Must be in-network. Fourth, bans other out-of-network charges without advance notice. Healthcare providers and facilities must provide patients with plain language consumer notice explaining that patient consent is required to receive care on an out-of-network basis. Again, quite important, right? For example, you now are going to have to get written notice from the provider before you accept out-of-network costs for healthcare services. I don't think that there's any question that these are going to be of some comfort for consumers, like I said, irrespective of political party. Now, that's not to say that this is just going to be an easy slam dunk. And here's why we're, I'm going to suggest that. Because as this article here correctly points out, the New York Times says, for surprise medical bills, it's the beginning of the end. Now, Law, regulators have to figure out exactly how to make the law work. Before we shoot off fireworks, any remaining fireworks that you didn't shoot off last weekend, we don't get to celebrate yet. Because this sur end, surpri end to surprise medical bills has been debated in the past. right? You've had a number of different parties, stakeholders in healthcare services, doctors, hospitals, especially, basically chiming in with their own point of view. In fact, you could see in a prior see me after class, I've called out doctors who've kind of tried to get behind the pulpit and say, hashtag patients over profits. Well, okay, fine. If that were the case and they were holier than thou, they can just accept the in-network charge in every instance without any pushback or debate from them. You don't see him saying that, right? So let's not make sure, let's make sure that we are holding people to a fair standard. And for those people of you who are new to the channel or don't know me or haven't heard you know other broadcasts here on the channel, if you think that I'm a doctor hater, you please remember that I liked few food as a child, the food that my beloved late father, medical doctor provided. So now let's just go back here. So now the surprise medical bills and how to make the law work. And shout out to these two journalists here. And again, as you can tell from other segments here, I fight pretty hard to be even handed. Meaning that if I see persons, parties in privileged positions, you know, who are taking advantage of those positions in order to further their political or overly biased message without giving even-handed evidence on the other side, I call them out, and I'm pretty harsh about it. And in that same spirit, I'm now complimenting Sarah Cliff, because she has been the subject of a see-me-after class, that in a prior role, she had violated a number of different things in a prior article, and I grilled her and pointed out all of the discrepancies that she actually wrote and signed her name to. It's a risk that every journalist takes, of course. In this instance, however, this is a very, she gets also the equal credit, because if you read other articles in the New York Times, she's devoted a fair amount of time to the idea that surprise medical bills appear out of the blue, unexplained to the consumer, and pointed them out, and has been kind of this advocate using the platform of the New York Times to make healthcare providers back down away from these mysteries. And for that, she get she has earned the credit. Earned the credit. Anyway. Now we go back down here. Now you see the by, of course, reporting what I just did, took its first step towards finalizing the details of a ban on surprise medical bills. Fine, all this true. Explaining what it is. Fine, took us a long way. Fine, 
outlawing surprise surprise was the rare health policy that gained bipartisan support. Like I said, one of the few topics we can all agree on. And now you see it took years to pass the legislation, a point I just made about the fact that the stakeholders here will have different points of view. Now, down here, passage aggressive lying effort, lobbying is still much, very much going on. This is going to be the issue, right? This is going to be the issue. How the law establishes a benchmark payment and a way for insurers and health providers to appeal to a neutral when they feel the amount is not appropriate. This is going to have multiple ripple effects, and here's the key point of this segment. If there's no mechanism, let's just say you're the doctor, you're the anesthesiologist, and you're like some doctor magic for a very specific case, and you charge a very high rate. Because you're one of just a couple of anesthesiologists with this particular skill. The issue is, how are you going to agree upon the rate? What's the mechanism? How's it going to be judged? The reason this has a ripple effect is because of the guys with the calculators. And who's that? The insurance companies. The insurance companies in the past, right, when there was a surprise medical bill, the insurance company had the easy route, which is simply to say, oh, that anesthesiologist, not in network, we're not paying a benefit. Therefore, the patient is fully responsible for the benefit. However, now, if you cannot do this and that the doctor has to charge X and the insurance company has to provide a benefit, that has to, that is going to be part of the calculation of insurance premiums. Again, insurance premiums are not just some hocus pocus, some random number that you might be led to believe. It may be popular conversation talk at happy hour or at senior coffee hour, for example. It's not the case. It, it simply isn't. Right? Insurance premiums are the calculated estimate of the health care cost that you might incur. If all of a sudden this anesthesiologist, other out-of-network providers have to be covered by that insurance policy, now all of a sudden that has to be an input into health insurance premiums going forward. Now, if that sounds complicated, there's a reason. It is very, very complicated. How this balance plays out, its ripple effect into health insurance premiums is yet to be seen. For that, we'll have to see how the filings turn out and we'll have to see how the premiums come out going into next year.